What is up, people? PP here, and today we're going to be looking at another video from, oh yeah, that's right, Mr. Wheat Waffles. Bro, I don't know about you, but like, waffles are pretty cool, especially if you get the blueberry kind, and dude, who does not like waffles? Because, oh yeah, I used to actually work at the Waffle House, bro, and uh, yeah, best place I ever worked, actually, and uh, dude, I was like 12 years in the military before that. Anyways, um, yeah, money was awesome. The people were awesome. And, dude, if people were cooking your food and they did not have missing front teeth, bro, you were not getting a good meal. So, yeah, the best cooks always had, like, their two front teeth missing. And, oh, yeah, dude, <laughs> fresh, crispy bacon and especially the hash browns. If you get them with, like, cheese and country gravy, that is the best. But anyways, today we are going to be... Checking out the legend himself, Mr. Wheat Waffles, this British guy who apparently, you know, gives people a false a sense of there's no hope when clearly there is, especially if you're a guy like me who looks as terrible as I do and as and dresses as bad as I do. And plus, dude, my room, I have literally uh, like the worst lights and I'm in the hood. But if I can get laid... Trust me, my friend, so can you. Because the game is, well, it's it's to be beaten. Every game is created to be beaten. And if you have yet to beat the game, then I'm going to help you do that today. So we're going to be checking out one of these videos by Mr. Wheat Waffles. It's called My Most Brutal Black Pilling Story, Why Dating Sucks for Average Guys. And... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be agreeing with this or disagreeing with it, but we're going to be just kind of responding to it in the best way possible in the most truthful manner. Yeah, truthful manner possible. So you guys can get the most vagina in your life and yeah, be happy because I know you little shits want to get laid because I definitely do. Yeah. So here we go. We're jumping right into this and uh, yeah. The story I'm about to tell you is a 100% real and honest experience taken from my own life. I've not made this up and everything in this video comes from what I've witnessed and my own observations. And just in case you were wondering, no, nor have I twisted any of this to align with some sort of belief system that I hold. And irrespective of this... Wait a second. I... If he's being real and honest here and he says, well, this is not to be twisted to align with a uh, belief system, well, well, then what do you call black pill, <laughs> okay? Isn't that like some sort of philosophy you guys hold to? That there's no hope, that girls suck? And that reminds me, well, I'll, I'll show the story later, but let's go ahead and get back to it. Sorry. Yes. By the end of the video, it should be clear that I have no reason to lie. There is no incentive for me to make any of this up. Put simply, this is the plain and simple truth. So before I get started, I'm first going to give a little bit of context about myself. So this is me, and this is a little bit of information about my background. So at least by western standards, I'd say that I had a fairly average upbringing. Not rich, not poor, somewhere in that middle 90%. And I'm not saying that in an ungrateful way. Obviously I'm thankful and fortunate for the upbringing that I have had. And I'm aware a lot of people have things significantly worse, especially out of the developed world. But just to give some context, I'd say my upbringing, at least by Western standards, was average. I'm about average looking, so I don't have any deformities to my face, my health, or my body, anything like that. I'm 5 foot 10 in height, which again, in the West, is bang on average height. I weigh 160 pounds, or 73 kilos which, surprise surprise again, is average healthy weight for a man of my height. So if you're not getting the idea by now, pretty much everything in my life is very average. What about your age, man? That's what I want to know. How old are you? And and the reason I say that is because, dude, if you're like 19, 20 years old, all right, imagine if I told you, hey, man, um, you know there's this game, it's called chess, and chess is such a great game, you should play it. By the way, if you're a begin if you're a beginner and you're not as good as I am, then you suck. And it's like, hold on a second. These guys are just starting out by playing this game of chess. You cannot expect them to be experts at beating the game. And when it comes to the game of dating, it does take a little bit of experience 
and a little trial and error. I'm 37. I've shagged over 100 women easily. And I can tell you, when I was 19, 20 years old, I had zero experience with women. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 19. And yeah, I mean, at that time, it sucked. And then, of course, my opinion would have changed drastically uh, once I go from a virgin at 19 to like the master at 37. Okay, that's how it is for a lot of guys. You start out at 19, 20 years old, you realize all those college girls suck because they're getting hammered out by the jocks and you're getting no pussy. But that's because you haven't been around long enough, dude. Anyways, let's continue. So he's an average looking guy, I guess. John Anthony exposed what he looked like. He's really not that bad looking. He's actually a decent looking guy. But anyways, continue, Mr. Wheat Waffles. Are you blueberry waffles or are you chocolate waffles? I want to know. But I am slightly above average intelligence. I've never taken an IQ test, but I'm guessing it's around the range of 120. And lastly, I don't have anything else about me that will be starkly noticeable. So I'm not balding, I'm not fat, I don't have a high-pitched squeaky voice, I don't have high levels of social anxiety, any mental illnesses, and so on and so forth. So pretty much, to sum up myself, to sum up my background, I can sum it up in just these four words. And I know it's cliche to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm pretty much just your average guy. And as stated earlier, I fall into that 90% of guys, the middle 90%, where the vast majority of the male population resides. So that's me. Now introducing another character, and this person is called Bella, which- Oh, ho, ho, Bella. Oh. Do I know a Bella for you, my friend? Let me bring you to my channel, and I'll let you tell your story first, but I do want to introduce little Bella on my channel. Where is she? Aha! And watching. So I have a story here for you guys when you get a chance, check it out. Basically, I tell a story about a very own Bella of my own that I know. Um, <laughs> and she's a trip. And yeah, let's continue. You should Sorry. have probably guessed, isn't her actual name. But for this video and for the sake of the story, we're just going to you refer a, to her from now on as Bella. Get a better look. So here's a really quick few points about her. So first of all, like me, she also had an average upbringing. Not rich, not poor. In terms of her looks, because I know a lot of people see that as important, she too was about average. And if you want to put numbers on it, I would say she's about a 6 out of 10. I'd say most men would look at her and think, hmm, yeah, yeah, she's kind of cute, she's kind of cute. So they can see a good degree of physical attraction. Bro, a 6 out of 10? I would bury my shaft. She's a baddie. Action in her. Personality wise, very good. She had a very good personality, great to talk to, very interesting, had a lot of depth to her, and was comfortable with talking about meaningful and intelligent topics. And I'm gonna bring up the cliche phrase again, with respect to her relationship with me, she'd be the girl that I would say, oh, we would just be great together. Wouldn't we make such a good couple? That's what I thought in my idealistic dream world, but of course, that's not what happened. So to cut it plain and simple, she friendzoned me. Well, technically. And what I mean by this is that I never directly asked her out or showed that I was attracted to her. However, she made it very clear from the beginning that it was only ever going to be friendship between us. And she made that- Okay, let me stop you right there. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're only three minutes and 30 seconds in to this video, and I can already tell from a couple things. Number one, this guy is young. Number two, this guy is a pussy for not asking the girl out, but that's okay. I was a pussy at one point too. Sometimes still am. So if you come up to me and try to fight me, chances are I will be the biggest bitch and run away. But anyways, that being said, um, I had this, uh, this conversation with a friend of mine a few days ago about a particular coworker that he liked, and we're just going to use the name of David. David um, liked a particular girl whose name was Emily, and well, Emily was his coworker, and he really liked her, and he was telling me about her, and I said, look, man, when it comes to coworkers, and he was actually her boss, okay, he was the manager, I was like, dude, look, when it comes to coworkers, if you like them, you get one chance, one chance to ask them out, and after that, it kind of becomes sexual harassment. So you get one chance to ask a coworker out, and if it doesn't work, 
you stop. What did he do? And I told him, I said, dude, ask her out, have some balls, just straight up say, hey, um, what are you doing Friday night? Let's go out for drinks. I'd like to take you to Longhorn Steakhouse or I want to take you to Applebee's or something like that. And she will likely agree to it because there's no pressure. And then you go from there and you try to smash within the first couple dates. It's not that hard. And uh, so he's like, no, I don't I don't think right now is a good time. And I'm like, dude, how much time do you need? You need like three years to ask her out. Like you should be asking a girl out within the first week. OK, the first week, if it's a new city for her, or if it's a new job or if it's a new whatever, a new environment, you should be asking her out within the first week, not waiting months and months on end because she's just going to drag you along and, oh, oh, you're my friend. Let me tell you about Big Dick Johnny over here and, and Little Dick Bobby over here and tell you about all the sexual escapades that I've been through and I've been ran through. Oh, and by the way, you need to listen to me rant and rave about it and be a shoulder for me to cry on. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll let you smash, maybe. And if not, you got to be okay with that. And you're just going to be her friend? Nah, dude, nah. There's no such thing as the friend zone for me. You either are going to let me hook up with you or we are not going to talk. If I ask you out, it's over. If you tell me, no. If you reject me, I'm not going to freaking give you any more of my time or attention. You're not worth it. Anyways, so long story short, David uh, does not ask her out. And yeah, now there's a big sexual harassment situation going on because he's making her uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, right? It's real easy to make a girl uncomfortable, especially if you like her at work. But uh, nonetheless, she ends up quitting because of him and the pressure that he was giving her. And I was like, dude, if you had just asked her out and if she had just said no, all right, you could have just left left it alone and then freaking moved on and been professional. But no, he wanted to freaking let her carry the shit out and be in the friend zone. That's why you should never put up with that bullshit. Anyways, let's continue. That clear by saying things like, I just don't see you that way. You know the kind of phrases, I see you as a brother to me. So I'd describe it very much as a friend zoning. So after this, I basically became her psychiatrist. Or soy boy, if you want to be brutally honest. You became her therapist, dude. She wanted to have a shoulder to cry on so she could tell you about all the dicks she's freaking hopped on from pipe to pipe. And she wants you to listen to that. Don't put up with that bullshit. Just be like, hey, I'm, I'm glad you had fun, whatever, you know. I'll see you when I see you. So whenever she had a problem, I fixed it. I was always there for her to help her with any issues she had whether they be about her family, her work, her school, whatever. And you could probably guess, yes, whenever she had a problem with any other guys who she was interested in, then I would be the one to help her through that. I'd be the guy she'd come to to discuss her <laughs> boy You're problems. A better man than me, dude. So that's her, and that's her relationship with me. As I say, very much a friend zone situation. But at the same time, I was still hopeful that all of this waiting around would be able to... Bro, you're being a shoulder to cry on for a girl who's a 6 out of 10. I wouldn't even do that for a 10 out of 10. Like, are you, are you kidding me? Anyways. Achieve something. And in the long run, maybe she would change her mind. But anyway, let's get on with the story. So the story starts with me and my friend in his car. And again, not his actual name, but we're going to refer to him as Jason. So we were in his car, and this was sometime during the day, down a road similar to this. Now Bella, she wasn't with us and she didn't know that we was going out. In fact, she didn't know who Jason was. Well, she knew who he was. I'd told her about him and shown her pictures. So she didn't know him, but she knew of him. Anyway, this story takes place over the messaging app Snapchat and I send a picture message to Bella so she can see that I'm in the passenger seat of somebody else's car. And by the way, I'm just gonna explain why it's relevant that it took place over Snapchat. So if you've not heard of Snapchat before, it's basically a normal messaging app, but the only difference is, is that every single time you send a text, you also send a picture. And the picture you send is usually going to be of yourself, your face, and the emotion expressed kind of explains the message being sent. So this message, you won't believe what happened, might come with some kind of shocked or startled look on your face. Or if you're annoyed with someone, this might come with some frustrated look on your face. Or lastly, if you're angry with someone, then quite obviously you're going to be visibly filled with rage. So that's basically how Snapchat works. Don't ask me why it works like this, but pretty much all you need to know is that every single time you send a text, 
you also send a picture. Anyway, carrying on with the story. So after Bella sees that I'm in somebody else's car, she replies back asking where I am and who I'm with. In a friendly way, obviously. Not stalkerish. And the important thing to note is, is that every single time she sends me a snap, is that she never cared about the quality. She wouldn't mind if she sent a blurry or poorly taken pic from a bad angle. She wouldn't care because she knew it was me and she saw me as a friend. She would take the picture just once and then send it from there. So remember this piece of information. Anyway, after this, I reply back to her and send her nothing else but just a picture of my friend Jason. No text, no captions, just a picture of his face. This was her response. She replies back and says that she hopes that we're having a fun time. Now it should be very evident that the content of the message means nothing, but the thing that was relevant, and this sticks in my mind so much, and that was the picture of herself that she sent to me. And what I noticed is that as soon as she saw my friend, she made sure she looked pretty. She made sure that it was taken from a good angle. She made sure her hair looked good. Now this left me stunned, and I wasn't sure at the moment, but three snaps later made me 90% sure on what was up. And in fact, the biggest confirmation that I received wasn't until Jason was back out of the picture. It wasn't until she saw that I was back home and it was just me on my own. That's when the same old pictures that she used to send came through. I just found this unbelievable, that she showed two faces of herself. Whenever Jason was around, she'd show this face. But just me? And she would show this face. And as I say, that day made me 90% sure of what I was thinking. However, things only confirmed even more what I thought in the coming days. Because it doesn't just stop here. After this day, all of a sudden, she starts arranging to meet up more often. Us as a free, of course. And whenever we went out, she would like to tag along with us. And you could have imagined how these times went down. And next one. This is a big one. She started dressing up every time we went out together. So okay, let, let me call guys out on their hypocrisy, okay? I get it. He's telling a personal story that's very dear to him. And, dude, I feel your pain. Trust me. I've been through divorce. I've been burned before. All that shit. Um, but do you realize how often guys will date a girl and then, oh, my God, they see their younger sister and they freaking lose their shit and they want to bang the sister, okay? My best friend, perfect example Okay, was dating a girl about three years ago, and she was, I don't know, early 40s or whatever. And I mean, they're smashing, right? Getting it on. Come to find out, she's got a daughter. Her daughter's like 18, 19 years old. And my buddy's like, Brian, what do I do? I mean, the daughter's like even more gorgeous than the mom. And I was like, well, dude, I mean, would you, would you care if, if the relationship ended between you and the mom? And it, And he's like, no, I don't give a shit. I was like, then go for it. Freaking ask the daughter out. <laughs> Needless to say, the girl turned her, excuse me, turned him down. And uh, yeah, he's no longer friends with uh, the mom. But that being said, you know, how often do us men do the same bullshit? Okay, is all I'm saying. And um yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm sorry she freaking ditched you for your friend. But you have to realize something also. When you're dating a gorgeous woman, chances are nine times out of ten, your best friends, your friends, the guys you associate with, are more than likely hitting her up on social media. And if they're not hitting her up on social media, they're trying to talk to her behind your back some way, somehow. I know this because I've been around, dude. I've been around on the earth for long enough to know this shit. Um, so, yeah, guys do that. And at the same time, she could have sex with either one of your friends. And maybe even all of them. She could probably do a full circle, have sex with all of your friends all at the same time and get a train ran on her. So that's what you have to, under that's what you have to understand about the game. You have to understand what you're up against and the beast that you're trying to tame, all right? Um, and that's where you have to weigh out the pros and cons. Is, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Um, for me, I've made the gamble that it is worth it. That's why I've been with so many women, and that's why I've chosen the one woman that I do currently have to be with me. And I'm happy, dude. It, it was worth it. So anyways, um, let's continue. Hear the rest of his story. 
So before, when it was just me and her, if I went round her house, she wouldn't really care. She'd wake up in pyjamas and she'd stay in them for the time I was round. But as soon as he was in the picture, Jason, then Bella made sure that she was wearing her best dress. Furthermore, it still doesn't stop there. She also made sure she wore makeup when it was us three. So before, when it was just me, she didn't really care. She didn't put in effort. She didn't care if her hair was a mess. However, as soon as this guy turns up, then she starts worrying. Then she makes sure that her appearance looks the best. And the final nail in the coffin that confirmed everything that I was speculating was that just three weeks later, they made it known that they was officially going out. So that's it. She was officially getting her back blown out, bro. <laughs> that's why nice guys finish last, man. You, you, cannot, you cannot wait on it. That's why I told my buddy, I was like, dude, you need to ask this girl out now because if you wait, guess what? She's gonna freaking she's gonna freaking hop on Johnny's dick over here. So yeah, I mean, it's like buying a car. Okay, when I went to go buy my most recent car, literally they would post the car on Facebook Marketplace and it would be gone like that. It would be gone within the first day. So if you didn't have the money ready or if you didn't have your transportation ready and all your ducks in a row to go meet the the seller and meet them at that instant, they were gone, man. That car was gone. It was off the market, and you're shit out of luck. So that's why I say, um, you know, don't wait. What, how long do you need to wait to ask a girl out? Three years? And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and just stop it here, but basically he just goes into the, the whole reason why um, looks mean everything, and, um, you know, she was a bitch for – ditching him for his friend and shit like that. And um, all I can say is, man, if you had this happen to you, I'm really sorry. I know the pain. Um, I've been through divorce, like I said. But there's hope at the end of the tunnel. There's light at the end of the tunnel. You can always get another girl. It's no big deal. Um, just shed your tears if you must. But, dude, stop crying about it and realize there's plenty of other women out there. And I wanted to show you this one thing as my final point. Millennia Thinker... If I can spell it right, Melania Thinker. And there's a video that he made about. So I've got my essay written. Shut and up, I'm dude. I don't care about Grammarly. I will misspell my shit all the time if I want to. Anyways. Okay, so the girl. I wanted to show you guys this uh, particular video by Millennia Thinker. If you get a chance, check him out. He's definitely a really good um, philosopher. Anyways, excellent videos. But the point of this uh, particular video that he made was to illustrate a point that um, don't let your friends talk you out of not dating the girl or not getting the girl of your dreams. Like, for example, this guy here on the left in his video was like, hey, man, you know, she's she's not good for you. You don't want her. She's, you know, she's a little bit um, of a tomboy and you know what? I, I just don't think she would, she would be a good fit for you. And he's like, you know what? Maybe you're right. And so things really went down south for the guy on the right and for his sexual interest here. So the sexual interest obviously moved on. Well, come to find out the old son of a bitch, his best friend that told him, hey, man, just ditch her. Leave her alone. Don't don't worry about her. Girls suck. Well, guess what happens? She freaking gets together with the same douchey ass boyfriend or the same douchebag friend that told him, hey, don't get with her. <laughs> let there be a lesson to you, man. Don't let these freaking black pillars talk you out of your good thing is what I'm saying. Um, because guys on the Internet like to bash women and say, oh, they're not shit. Oh, they're they're uh they're horrible. They'll take your they'll take your money. They won't put out blah blah blah. I'm guilty of that because guess what? I I've, I've made videos before where I badmouth women because yeah, they suck sometimes. It's a love-hate relationship. But at the same time, always remember the girl of your dreams is out there getting hammered out because you didn't make a move. <laughs> So you got to make a move, man. That's just the facts. <laughs>
That's why I say, man, you either want to either want to take the blue pill and go back to your fantasy, or you're going to take the red pill and, and understand the truth. Man, the world the world is funny, and girls are freaking hilarious. Um, and uh, anyways, I, I love this comment here. This guy, he's like, as a heterosexual male, tomboys are one of the most perfect things created by God. And dude, you got to understand if if girls are a certain way try to understand why okay she probably had a really close tie with her father you know if she had a good father influence all right girls if they're a little bit tomboyish it's not that bad it doesn't mean she's a lesbian it doesn't mean she's a butch or a bull dagger okay but anyways um so yeah that concludes our um examination of wheat waffles for today i hope you guys enjoyed this little video we waffles, you're not you're not a bad guy, man. You're just a young guy. That's all it is. You're just a young guy who's had some bad experiences and wait until you're my age and you've got a 16-year-old daughter you haven't seen in years and uh you've got two divorces under your belt. And yeah, you've been through life and paid over 150 grand for child support. And you're living in the hood, bro. Put yourself in my shoes for a minute. See what it's like. Um and even I have not yet given up on women, and I won't. You know why? Because guys like Al Pacino are dating chicks 50 years his junior. Watch this. And he's like 81. <laughs> Bro, his girlfriend is sexy as shit. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, um, he's an old man. He doesn't deserve her. Bro, He's a multimillionaire, and I've heard he's a cheap ass. He won't spend money, but, like, if you think looks matter 100%, you're an idiot. <laughs> so, yeah, you just need to uh, get successful in life and um, be an upstanding individual, be respectful, and be a respectable kind of guy, an honorable guy, but, and you'll do just fine. Um, take it from me, who's bedded over 100 women after I've been divorced and lost everything, and I'm a pizza delivery driver, for God's sake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you think I got shit going for me? Absolutely not. But I'm here on YouTube having a good time, making videos because it's fun, even though nobody watches my shit. But hey, if you're the lucky guy who did find my channel, and this opens your eyes to some truth, I hope I've made some uh, I hope I've hope I've I hope I have given you some life changing advice because there's hope, dude. Don't give up hope, and that's why I don't like the black pills because, yeah, they try to destroy all hope in people. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Okay, I'm BP.